Hello friends, my name is Elle and this is Linda Moon and you are joining us for another deep dive for Grow Kids Volume 5. This time we're going to be talking about our Easter series for this volume, which is called Did You Know? Uh, we're going to tell you all about it, both the big picture ideas as well as a bunch of little details that we don't want you to miss. Linda, what are we doing today? Yeah, so what we're doing with this deep dive is we are going to give you basically a sneak peek of what's to come in this series, Did You Know? And if you're a Grow user, wonderful. We're going to give you just all of the things you need to get you started. And if you're not a Grow user, that's completely fine. There are lots of things in here that you can take back and use however you'd like in your own ministries as well. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about just giving you a big overview of Did You Know? the series. And then we're going to look at some of the theming aspects and then we'll talk about the structure and how the teaching is broken down and then lastly we'll give you some fun tips to help you make did you know the best series ever Okay, so did you know, this is a series, like we said, that it's all about Easter. We're kind of starting in some of the events that are leading up to Easter, going all the way through Jesus' death and resurrection and the things that happen afterwards. Uh, but what we're doing with this series is the reason it's called Did You Know is because we're giving it a really fun trivia theme, kind of like game show or like board game, all that stuff. So Linda, walk us through what the series is all about. Yes, and so because our series is trivia themed, all of our big ideas for this month are questions. And you can actually take away the did you know part of it and just have some really great freestanding big ideas on their own. But there is a benefit to making it into a question and phrasing it that way because it invites kids to really think about these truths that we're saying about Jesus and have they actually claimed these as their own and it gets them to talk and you can have some good conversations surrounding these big ideas. So it's going to be really wonderful. I love it. Yeah. And of course it's on theme. So that's always a wonderful little treat. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Week one of this series, we're going to kind of back up into the events that are leading up to the Easter story. Uh, and so in this week, we are going to be talking about the time that Jesus was anointed by Mary in John 12. Uh, in this story, you've got Judas, who of all people points out that Mary is wasting a ton of valuable perfume on Jesus' feet. Uh, but what Mary does in the story is that she shows that she values Jesus more than uh, her really expensive jar of perfume, which is why the big idea for this week is, did you know that we can love Jesus more than anything? In week two, we are in Palm Sunday, and we're looking at the story in Luke chapter 19 when Jesus enters Jerusalem, and the crowds welcome him as they would a king. And the interesting thing about this passage is that when Jesus is confronted by people to tell his followers to quiet down a little bit because they're making a ruckus, Jesus says that if they were to be quiet, then even the stones would cry out. And so it goes to show that Jesus was not the kind of Messiah that everyone had been hoping he would be, but he was much, much more. So that's why week two's big idea is, did you know Jesus is king over everything? Love it. Uh, then week three, this is scheduled for Easter Sunday. So of course, we are going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we can forget to cover the things that happen between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So we are going to cover some of those things as well. Uh, but of course, it's Easter Sunday. So the big idea for this week is, did you know that Jesus is alive? Finally, in week four, we are looking at the story of Jesus appearing to his disciples in John chapter 20. And we want to move away from just your usual uh, doubting Thomas narrative and talk about how Jesus had told all of his friends that he would die and also come back to life, but none of them had really believed it. And so by seeing him again in the flesh, their faith is strengthened, they're encouraged. And that's why week four's big idea is, did you know that we can trust Jesus? Love it. Uh, this is so fun. Such a cute series. And all of these ideas, these big ideas can be wrapped up and really summarized in what is our memory verse for this month, uh, which has a little bit of uh, knowledge, trivia related uh, theming, as well as a bunch about Jesus. And it is this, 2 Peter 3, 18a, which says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
All right, now let's talk about the theme for this series. Like we said, the decorating theme for this whole series is trivia. Now you can go a lot of different ways with this. There are like trivia game shows and there are trivia board games, uh, trivia card games, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, we personally recommend going like the retro vibe just because we think that's really fun. Uh, but Linda, tell us what you recommend for the decorations for the series. And yes, I want to second that retro vibe. It's super fun and you can find so many wonderfully fun ideas if you search for them online. And so go ahead and do that or check out our programming guide and our Pinterest board to help you get started. Um, this would be the best and ideal setup for your space is to do something super wacky and colorful like this image here. Um, but I understand that not all of us can decorate to this extent. So let's just get some basics to help you get started. And so one thing you might want to invest in is some kind of a curtain backdrop. Um, that would just be really fun to use for multiple things in the future as well. Um, but this would be a really fun way for you to enter as you do your Bible teaching or just to have different things appear behind the curtain. So that'd be really fun. Um, another thing that you want to check out is just getting some colorful lights like strobe lights um, or anything just just to make that whole space just shine and just really really bright um, and another thing that you might want to look at is getting a game show podium and obviously probably not buying one but you can make some and uh, you can I've seen some images where people are just using cardboard boxes wrapped in bulletin board paper and even that is super fun so and also please pictures if you do that um, and of course what is a game show without buzzers so you might want to invest in some buzzers there are these fun game show type ones or game board type buzzers here but i know there are a ton of different varieties out there if you look for them and lastly uh, you can award some fun prizes to your kids we personally like this sharp as a tack trophy nice little pun there but also it's trivia so we want to award them for not just using their hearts but their brains this month Okay, next up, we wanna talk about the structure of the series. Now, if you are using Grow, maybe you're a little bit familiar, uh, you may have already noticed that every week of our curriculum follows the same general structure, but within that general structure, there is a ton of different stuff for every single uh, series and every single week. So the thing that always stays the same are like the, the big three sections that our teaching is presented in uh, for elementary. And so those three sections are called the what section, the so what section and the now what section. Um, for preschool, it's set up a little bit different, but also very similar. The whole idea is we're starting off with kind of like the big fun intro to the theme and to the topic. Uh, then we bring scripture in and help kids see uh, what matters to God and why that should matter to them. And then we wrap it up by focusing on application, which is the now what section to give kids some like really practical applications that they can take uh, and do throughout the week. Um, so that is the idea, uh, but there are some things that make every single series unique because, you know, it would be boring to do the same thing every single week. So Linda, what is unique and interesting and awesome about this series? It's funny you say it's boring to do the same thing every single week, but the first thing I want to draw your attention to is our big idea reveal, which is basically the same every week, um, but super fun. And we'll talk about that in just a sec after Elle describes what that is for those of you who are not familiar. And the second thing I want to point out in the series is all the activities. I know it's a lot, but we'll talk about what we mean when we say that. Love it. So yeah, let's talk about those big ideas really quick. Um, every week of our curriculum, we kind of take like the big important biblical truth from that week and try to just distill it into like a really simple sentence, something that's easy for kids to remember, easy for them to repeat, easy for them to understand. So when we say big idea, that is what we are talking about. Those are the things that we uh, read for you a few minutes ago. Uh, and yeah, every series, we try to come up with like a new way to reveal the big idea uh, that is on theme with that month's series. So um, kids will be able to expect, okay, every week there is going to be a big idea that's going to be revealed, uh, but it's going to be revealed in a fun, different way for every series. So what are we doing this time, Linda? Well, this month's big idea reveals in true game show fashion, we are setting up prize doors. And I know that not all of you have large spaces with doors just coming off of your space. So we are going to manufacture these doors using butcher paper. So what you do is you write the big idea on poster paper or what have you, put it up on the wall and then cover it up with just like a long strip of 
butcher paper and you set up three of them and then you label them one, two, three. And then the kids have to decide behind which door is the big idea. Is it behind door number one? I think it would just be super fun. And make sure you just go all out and theme that up as you display the big idea. Um, also, you in the, in the fourth week, what we're going to do is we're going to put up four doors. I know you can just save your poster paper from week to week. Um, and, and on the fourth week, we're going to re- kind of do a review and a reveal. So when the kids find the fourth big idea, we're going to just review all the big ideas together. So I think that would just be a really fun way for your kids to learn the big ideas this month. And also, if you're not really big on the door thing, you could also try doing a version of Wheel of Fortune. And that would be also a fun way for kids to find out what the big idea is, where they call out a vowel or a consonant and trying to get the big idea. Love it. So fun. So those are the big idea reveals. You also mentioned that we have some fun activities for this one. So let me just define when we say activities. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it's also like an official term in GROW curriculum. Uh, what we do within within um, every lesson of GROW is we use a lot of different styles of teaching. Um, so things that are like hands-on, some things that are like more visual. Uh, we have like object lessons, videos, images. We do music. We do all sorts of stuff. Um, But what we mean when we say the word activity is literally anything that gets kids involved. So if you as the teacher or the uh, large group room leader, uh, if you need a kid to get involved in order to achieve this thing, that is what we call an activity. So it could be a game, could be a craft, could be all sorts of stuff. So Linda, tell us some of your favorite activities from this series. Yes, um, there are so many good activities, especially because it's the trivia theme. We have lots of spin the wheel kind of things. We have family feud type of things. We have Jeopardy type of things, lots of theme related elements, but they're all related to the big idea and Bible story each week. Um, And so just go check them out. There are a ton of really good things in there. But the thing I wanted to draw your attention to is the fact that all of these activities and sometimes even in parts of the teaching portion, um, they can your kids can earn points like a true game show and they can be in teams and tally up some points for them and you can give them some fun prizes at the end of the series and so uh, we suggest that you have your kids divide up into teams and have them come up with their own team name um, and then make a scoreboard that you keep up throughout the duration of the did you know series and you can make it a blank slate and just have them compete like you know just week to week, or you can have it just this like long running scoreboard and at the end of the series and you can declare a winner. So however you'd like to do that, it would be really fun for kids to see their scores up somewhere. Um, And also at the end, just to kind of theme it up just a little bit more, we suggest getting this giant blank check to give to the winning team. And you know, you can write a million dollars on it or not. I don't know how you feel about that, but just um, award it to your winning team just to have that just be a fun photo opportunity to wrap up the series. Love it. So cute. Um, So now that we've covered like the overview of the series, the theme and the structure, we are just going to wrap it up with giving you a few helpful tips to help you make the series extra awesome. Okay, so our first tip for you is to use our Bible story illustrations. I know some of you have been asking for them, and I know that some of you already found them in our Facebook group, so awesome job. I know we've had these for just a little bit now, but I don't think we've ever actually like formally announced it. So they're here. We have Bible story illustrations for you. You can find them in the preschool teaching folder under teaching videos. There's a folder called illustrations and they are provided courtesy of our preschool video team. Shout out to Harvest Ark. Um, And they're super wonderful. You can print them out. You can use them on a tablet. You can project it on a screen just to kind of supplement your teaching because I know a lot of you have been asking for visual aids. So I hope you like them and I hope you use them really well. Love it. Uh, Tip number two is that you can find even more games if you are looking for more games on the Grow Games and Icebreakers app, which is totally free. You can search for it in all of your favorite app stores. Um, I think we currently have like 700 different games in there. Uh, There's a lot. And so what you get with those games is you get like a graphic that you can put up on the screen and you get all of the instructions on how to make it happen. 
Uh, if it's a screen game, then it will also give you slides. Uh, they're not all screen games though, just some of them are. Uh, but you can search by like age group. So if you are um, leading preschoolers, you can search by, by preschool, you can search by elementary, uh, you can search by trivia, you can search by all sorts of things. So check that out. There is a ton of stuff in there. It's just a little bonus um, on top of the games we already give you. And the cool thing is the app is still growing, right? We're still adding yep. new games to them. So by the time you see this video, we might have more games. <laughs> so many. So many games. Uh, go check that out. Our third tip for you is to pair this series with our spring discipleship resource called Crossway Station. And if you don't really know about that quite yet, go ahead and check out our deep dive that Ellen and I did um, you can just search in our Facebook group or wherever you're viewing this video. Um, it'll just be a great way to kind of build up to the series where you can do it concurrently with the series because the Crossway Station experience has a lot of um, a lot more detailed explanation of the events surrounding the death and resurrection of Jesus. So it'll be a great way to do a deep dive into the Bible and the Easter story. Amazing. Uh, friends, as always, thank you so much for joining us for this deep dive. We'll be back next month to do this for the next series as well. Uh, but in the meantime, we would love to hear what you are doing for the series. We'd love to see your pictures, see your videos, hear your stories, uh, just see the fun ways that you've decorated and kind of adapted the ideas uh, that we've given you to make them even more awesome for your context. So you can share those in our Facebook group, which you can find by searching for Stuff You Can Use, a children's ministry community. Uh, you can also tag Tag us on Instagram. We love to see your pictures and often we'll repost them. Um, yeah, we, we just want to see it because you guys are awesome and creative and we'd love to see what you're doing. Uh, and if you need anything, please feel free to tag our incredible team and somebody will rush to your aid. Um, friends, we really will. <laughs> we will. We will. Somebody will. Somebody's on Facebook all the time. We're ready. Yes. Somebody um, on our team is awake and watching. Always. <laughs> That sounds a little creepy. <laughs> it did sound creepy, but I liked it though. I liked it. Uh, well, friends, thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, have so much fun with the series and happy early Easter. Bye. Happy Easter. Bye.